I have no idea how this is going to go because it's going to be my first ever epoxy resin pour. The plan is to turn all this into an epoxy encased diorama even HP Lovecraft would be proud of. I'm really excited about this and a little nervous. My name is Troy, this is Facility D20. Come on in, let's get at it. I used a little bit of hot glue to glue the SM blocks together. Once I had a high enough stack, I cut it using my foam cutter. This thing cuts foam like butter and is really satisfying to use. I just kept hacking away at it until I slimmed the cliff down to about what I wanted. Then I changed attachments on my foam cutter and just used the needle attachment to burn in some cliff face details. Then I went ahead and used a little bit of wood glue. Create a nice seal so the epoxy resin wasn't slipping under. Add a bit of hot glue to glue it in place right quick. And then fix the cliff face to the plywood base. Add a few extra rocks. And the idea here was to just displace some of the resin so I could use a little bit less resin in this build. Next up, I mix a bit of acrylic caulking with some acrylic paint. I made a nice thick base coat that I worked into the cliff face, especially on the lines where the foam pieces joined. Adding a little bit extra texture. Then I was a little bit worried about how the epoxy resin would react, so I mixed up some Mod Podge and acrylic paint and just seal it all in with a black base coat. Then I used a whole bunch of Deco Art paints and just dry brushed down some details onto the cliff face. A little bit of gray. followed by a little bit of brown and then finally a lighter gray color. Now I wasn't super happy with this so I brought it over to the painting table and I used my airbrush to spray on some horizontal lines of a light gray. Once that was done, I used some green to spray on some vertical lines to like simulate vegetation and algae. And this was making this cliff face look so much better and then I was pretty much happy with it. Looking good so far. Printing and painting this Cthulhu Mini was a huge part of this project. So huge in fact that I made a whole video on it and I'll link it up here in the corner. Now, for this video, I got something really special because my buddy GMA Tank from Paint the Life has come on board for a little collaboration. He's got some really cool Cthulhu mythos to share with you as we print and paint this massive mini. Let's get at it. Howard Phillips Lovecraft, born in Rhode Island in 1890, was not widely known in his time, considered more of an amateur rather than a professional writer. After an earthquake on February 28th, 1925, Lovecraft started to have nightmares and began writing about them. 
We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. H.P. Lovecraft, The Call of Cthulhu. That quote is an ongoing theme in Lovecraft's work. The complete irrelevance of mankind in the face of the cosmic horrors that exist in the universe. One such horror is Cthulhu. Characterized as the priest or leader of the Old Ones, a species that came to Earth from the stars before human life arose. The Old Ones went dormant, and their city slipped under the Earth's crust beneath the Pacific Ocean. Yet, while Cthulhu lies in a death-like sleep, his dreams resonate still in the minds of his children and touch upon the dreams of many slumbering authors, artists, like Troy, and philosophers driving many of them mad. In hidden corners of the world, uncivilized people remember and worship Cthulhu in rites described as loathsome. These groups have statues of Cthulhu made of materials not of this earth. In his house at Raleigh, dead Cthulhu waits, dreaming. H.P. Lovecraft, The Call of Cthulhu When conditions are right, the city will rise, and with the help of his eternal cult, Cthulhu will awaken and again rule the world. But that, of course, is just poppycock, right? Thanks, Troy. I'm GMA Tank from the YouTube channel Paint to Life. I take Dungeons & Dragons themed miniatures, paint them up, and give them a unique background story that you can use for your own adventures or give you some inspiration. So if you like Dungeons & Dragons or fantasy genre in general, I invite you to come on down and subscribe to Paint to Life. I'm GMA Tank. Let's get painting. Thanks a lot, man. That was awesome. Guys, make sure you check out Paint to Life. He also done a really cool Cthulhu video, and I'll link it at the end of this video. Once I had this guy done, I hot glued him to the base, and then I used some spackling compound to simulate the sand and to bury that base up. Now don't worry, when this dries, it dries white. The trick to this stuff is to let it set up for a couple hours and then come back and you can use your hand or another tool to smooth it down a bit and it's a little less sticky. You can sculpt it a little more when it gets to this point. Next up, a quick base coat of sand and I think I also give it a little dry brush as well to try to make some colors pop. Then I used some Lexan to make the encasement. Went nice and heavy with the silicone and glued these side pieces on. Now when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you use nice clean plexiglass or Lexan because any scratches will end up being imprinted on your resin at the end of the day. Also use a square here to square everything up. Quick dab of hot glue to hold it in place before filling all the seams with silicone. Now I'll let this dry up overnight and I added another coat, at least two coats to all this for sure. A little bit of Gorilla Glue just in case it started to leak. Like I mentioned earlier, I was really nervous about this epoxy resin pour because I didn't quite have enough resin. I didn't really have the right type of resin, but sometimes you just gotta roll the dice and that's the perfect segue for the sponsor of this video, Copana Dice. You can find Copana Dice on Amazon under the seller Copana US, link in the description. Copana makes tons of beautiful high quality metal dice like the antique copper set featured here. This dice set consists of seven metal dice, a tote bag, and a carrying case perfect for Dungeons and & Dragons and other RPGs. 
Make sure you follow the link in the description and check out everything Copana has to offer. And now it was time for the fun part, the resin pour. I'm using magic resin here. This is just a tabletop stuff for arts and crafts, but you can get a deep pour stuff, which is what I should have used. This stuff you can only do about a half inch at a time. Either way, I figured it would be a good idea to mix up a little bit of this stuff and just apply a brush coat over all the sand and cliffs and rocks just in case the heat from the curing process would cause some sort of weird reaction. I figured this would protect it. Next up, I mix up about 600 milliliters of resin per pour, add a one tiny little bit of coloring, stir it in, and start at this pour with about four to six hours wait between each layer. This is the first layer, I use a lighter to heat up the resin and get out any bubbles that might be settling. Pour number two. Pour number three. Pour number four. Pour number five. Don't forget to get the bubbles out. And finally, after about two days, pour number six. And this time, I dump some over Cthulhu. It's been about 24 hours since the last pour, and like I figured, I ran out of resin. Now, I expected that, but that's okay. I thought about ordering some more resin and finishing this thing off, but I've already got like $200 put into this project so far, and it'd be another $100 or so for the resin. And because I didn't really go with the proper resin, this powder that I used is a little more cloudy than I would hope for, so you can't see through it as well. But that's okay because I got a new idea now and what I'm going to do is make some waves and some like little waterfalls and stuff and I'm going to have this guy like submerging from the ocean floor and what I think I'll do is I'll just cut this cliff down a little bit shorter. Now the first thing I had to do though is bust this thing out of this encasement here and cut this cliff off so let's get at it. If you're liking this video, go ahead and join the facility by smashing that subscribe button. We're always making cool stuff here, whether it's miniatures and terrain, or epic fantasy and sci-fi projects. Either way, we're always up to something cool, and I'd love to have you here. Also, make sure to hit that like button, because it really do help small channels like this out. Thanks, guys. Next up, I just clean up the edges with a sharp blade. And I had to cut off this cliff here, and luckily enough, it pretty much came apart between where the two pieces were hot glued together, and it didn't even do much damage. I used a ball of tin foil to add some like texture to the top of this cliff face. Then I give it a nice base coat of brown. While that was drawing, I used some gloss Mod Podge, dumped it on here, and started to make some waves using my airbrush. If you do this, you want to make sure you have the gloss Mod Podge because it draws to a more crystal clear like finish.
If you don't have an airbrush, you could probably use a straw. They're hard to reach places, so I just got in there with my brush. This takes about 24 hours to dry off. While that was drying, I also washed the top of the cliff face in some earth shade, and then I give it a little dry brush to make some colors pop. Then I used some silicone on a piece of saran wrap and made little drip waterfalls. Once it dried up overnight, I peeled them off and glued a few here and there to Cthulhu. Now I knew I wanted a lighthouse, so I went on Thingiverse found a lighthouse that sort of worked, found a building that sort of worked, remixed it and changed some stuff up myself, joined the two together, and then I had a lighthouse that I was happy with. You can also see here in the background, I had the model of Cthulhu, along with the rough size of the base, and if you're quick, you'll also see a little ship there, and I use all these items to pretty much scale up how big these pieces had to be. Then I printed it off. Washed and cured it. And finally primed it gray. Next up, I had to flock and add vegetation to the top of the cliff here. I also made like a little road. Then I realized he couldn't drive straight off to the water and I had to change the direction of the road. Added some slate rocks, followed by light and green flocks and bushes. Now, while that was drying, I added some more Maj Paj waves, this time trying to do like ripple effects out from around Cthulhu, and I made sure to add little splashes under where those waterfalls would be dropping. Then I printed the ship, primed it gray, and give it a quick paint job using some contrast paints and some airbrush paints, mostly silvers, reds, and grays. Then with the big pool of Mod Podge, I put it in place and added some weight behind the ship. Next up, I took some light brown and just dry brushed some wear and tear on the road here. The lighthouse got an easy paint job with some bone colors. I painted the roof red, added a few details in gray to the windows and stuff, and it was looking pretty good. Painted the glass blue and used my airbrush to just shoot some white on it. And I wanted to do something special with the top, so I painted it in like a brassy copper color. And then I went ahead and took some of the Citadel Detail Technical Paint and just oxidized the top of it. Glued it in place. Then I painted some toothpicks. Cut them in half.
With a bit of crazy glue, I glued on a bush and I had miniature oak trees. And I just stuck those into the SM. Finally, I have some trim kicking around that I just cut on 45s and nailed to the base of the plywood. Then using some army painter white paint, I just dry brushed the tips of the waves. Make sure to really get in there with the wake behind the ship. You know, the fact that I didn't have enough resin here to fill this all the way to the top like I originally envisioned in my mind, I think it worked out for the better. Having him burst into the ocean like this with these little waterfalls and stuff, I think just makes for a cooler diorama. I'm really happy with how this thing turned out and I can't wait to show you guys the final shots. Now, I really want to thank my Patreons for this video. With your guys' support, I was able to buy that magic resin along with the resin to paint Cthulhu, and I really hope you can learn a little bit from my experiences with that stuff. Stick around on my channel, check out some more videos, or go over to Paint the Life channel and check out his Cthulhu video. I got them linked right here.